Hey, what do you say weekend warriors? Today we are smoking up this four pound Boston butt. We're making a homemade garlic fennel rub. This is one of those recipes you have to start the day before. Let's get back here and make this homemade rub and I'll show you what we're up to. This fennel garlic rub recipe comes from one of my all-time favorite barbecue cookbooks. It's called Cool Smoke by Tuffy Stone. And then I'm gonna make a grilled corn salad, which comes from J. Kenji Lopez Alt. So with that out of the way, let's get right to this. And by the way, guys, if you are like me and you make a lot of your own rubs, you might wanna invest in one of these little uh, coffee grinders. I'll put a link to this below. This works great uh, for making up your own rubs. Sometimes, like today, I need to grind up some seeds. So these are fennel seeds. Man, pick up that jar, smell it. Uh, it's got a licorice smell to it. That's what's really gonna make this special. So we're starting with two teaspoons that we're gonna grind up. To that, I've got some crushed red pepper flakes. I'm gonna do one teaspoon. And I know they're already crushed, but I'm gonna put them in with the fennel seeds anyways. So we'll grind those two up. Then I don't know if we'll be able to see that yet, but nice and ground up, pretty much into a powder. Just gonna pour this into a mason jar. To that, this is one half cup of kosher salt, quarter cup of black pepper, and I'm going to go with two teaspoons of garlic powder. This is the best store-bought garlic powder I've ever had. It's potent. So let me get uh, about two teaspoons. put the lid on and I'm gonna shake it up to mix it. Now this actually is enough for about three of these four pound pork butts. So if you want to uh, cut back on the quantity, that's fine. Or you'll have a good uh, little fennel garlic rub for something else. I'm sure this would be great on chicken, any kind of pork. All right. And before I put the rub onto the pork butt, I want to use a binder and what I mean by a binder is uh, we're going to put something on the pork butt to help the rub stick. I've used yellow mustard, I've used sweet and spicy in a recent video um, and because today's mop sauce that we're going to use is Worcestershire based, that's what I'm going to use. Um, you don't have to use anything at all really if you don't want to. If it's a little bit wet coming out of the package and you think it's going to stick then that's fine, that'll work. So what we're gonna do is just rub it in. Make sure the whole thing gets coated. And I think this will add some extra flavor. And it's smelling good already. So now that we have the binder on there, we can get our rub on there. So I'll just give it one last shake to make sure it's uh, nice and combined. Go ahead, I'm just gonna eyeball it. We wanna cover the whole thing. And what's gonna happen, guys, is this sits overnight in the refrigerator, uncovered. It's gonna kinda dry brine. And what happens is the moisture is gonna get pulled out of the pork by the salt. And that sounds like a bad thing at first, but actually what happens, once the salt is dissolved, all of that moisture goes back into the meat, pulling in all of the flavor. So the saltiness, the pepper, and all the other spices. It's gonna get pulled down into the meat. And then what's gonna happen is it's gonna create a nice, wet, sticky surface on the meat. And that's gonna allow the meat to collect more smoke during the smoking process. Okay, so this is really about it for tonight. I just got off of work, so first thing I did is 
got the camera out, got all this ready to go. Now I am ready to relax. So refrigerator, uncovered, overnight. It could be 12 hours, 15 hours, doesn't really matter. When this comes out tomorrow, it's gonna look completely different. I'll show you what I mean by that little tacky texture. And then we're gonna throw it in the smoke and uh, let it do its thing. So we'll be back tomorrow. I'll show you how this looks. I can't wait. All right, one day later, the pork is looking awesome. Before we take a look at that though, I'm using my vertical offset smoker today. I've got it set to 250 degrees Fahrenheit or about 120 degrees Celsius for my metric system friends. Uh, if you're using a pellet smoker, same thing, 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Use your favorite pellets. For me today, for the wood, I'm using oak and cherry. And what I love about doing this the day before, all I really have to do is just throw it right in the smoker once it's up to temp. But let's real quick take a look at this. So this had a chance to air dry overnight in the refrigerator. And what's happened is it has developed this very sticky, tacky skin. Uh, it's called a pellicle. And there's some very strong opinions on the internet about this. Uh, so take it with a grain of salt. But the theory is that this sticky, cold and wet texture uh, helps the smoke stick better and stick more evenly. We'll find out if that's true today. Some people say that uh, you get a better bark, but uh, spin this around for you. Maybe a little bit better view here. So very sticky, almost like um, cured salmon texture on the outside if you've ever had locks or something like that. So again, they call it a pellicle. We'll see if we can myth bust that or not today. Uh, but I have done this several times and I like it. Um, but we'll leave that up to uh, you guys to figure out for yourselves. So let me get this right into the smoker. Pop that door open. And I'm gonna go about the center rack as usual. You'll notice if you've watched for any period of time, I run this almost exactly like I do my vertical pellet smoker. There's that bottom side, which I'm gonna place up for no real reason. And keep them right about there. Close this up. And then just to show you, for those that are curious, back here in the bottom left, I've got a little water pan. So just like in my vertical pellet smoker, I like filling up that water tray most of the time. In this smoker, uh, the back left corner is hotter than the rest. So that kind of acts as a diffuser. Keeps that temperature nice and balanced. So, so I'm gonna get this closed. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna let this smoke for one hour. Then we're gonna come out and start spritzing it about every half an hour after that. So right now we have one hour to make that spritz. Let me show you how to do that. So uh, it's a vinegar base sauce. This is apple cider vinegar. And I'm gonna use half a quart, which will be about half of this bottle that I've already uh, had opened up. Tablespoon of black pepper. Two tablespoons of kosher salt. A couple tablespoons of your favorite hot sauce. couple tablespoons of your favorite Worcestershire sauce, half a stick of butter, and because I'm outside I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring this up to a boil over top of my firebox but you could do this on your grill you could do this on your stovetop just get it over here so that's plenty hot to bring this up to the boil right here I just have a, a piece of oak preheating it's about ready to go into the firebox so let the butter melt. We're gonna bring it up to a simmer. And then I'll keep mine in a mason jar. Uh, I want something with the lid to keep the bugs out, keep the leaves, all that stuff out while it sits outside. There's a little bit left here in the uh, pot that I'll just use for my first mop, which will be in about 30 more minutes. So we'll come back in 30 minutes. We'll check out that pork butt. We'll put this mop on there and see how it's looking. And we're coming up on the one hour mark total since it's been in. We're holding steady right around 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's pop this door open. Man, it smells so good. I love that oak and cherry mixed. There's a look at our butt. So the crust or the seasoning has uh, dried out. It's not coming off on my finger. That's a good sign. And so now I'm gonna hit it up with our mop, just the little bit that was left in the pan here. 
It's that good vinegar, a little bit of hot sauce. It's gonna be awesome. And this is the name of the game from here, folks. Just every 30 minutes. Come in and mop this thing. Keep it moist. We're gonna build up some extra flavors. Close this back up. I'm not gonna show you every uh, 30 minutes. We're gonna come back when it's about time to wrap this. I wanna take it up to, uh, we'll go about 160, 165 degrees Fahrenheit today on the internal before we wrap it. And then we'll put it back in to finish it up. So our pork is getting close. I just tempted it. It's at about 160-ish on the internal. What I'm gonna do right now is I've got three ears of corn. So I'm gonna make that corn tomato salad. And what I'm gonna do is let them kind of steam down here on the bottom rack. It'll be a lot easier to get the uh, silk out of here. So we're gonna let them kind of par cook on the bottom rack. And then we'll finish them off on a grill so we get some nice grill marks on the corn. Let's take a look at our pork. Woo! It's looking good. I've been mopping it every 30 minutes. And I'm going to give it one more mop because this probably got 30 minutes before I wrap it. And uh, going by color when it has the color that I want. Nice deep dark mahogany and that'll probably be around 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Go ahead and push this back in and then we'll come back when it's time to wrap and start that corn and tomato salad. Okay so this has the color I'm looking for. I don't really care what the temperature is but I know a lot of you are curious about that so let's see where we're at. About 170 Fahrenheit. Here's the fat cap side. Here's the top that was getting all the base. Here's the bottom. It looks really, really good. So what I'm gonna do is wrap this up two layers of foil so I don't get any leaks. I wanna hold in as much juice as possible. And just so you know, you do not have to wrap this if you don't want to. The reason most people wrap it is so it doesn't get too much smoke flavor. You don't want to over smoke it. But this will speed up the cooking process too, help tenderize it, but you absolutely don't have to uh, wrap it if you don't want. You could just leave it in the smoke the whole time until it gets uh, probe tender. And that's my game plan once I wrap this. I don't care what temperature it gets to, I just want to make sure that temperature probe goes in and out like it's going into warm butter. That usually happens somewhere around 200 degrees Fahrenheit. I've had them go all the way up to 215. Sometimes it happens right around 200. Just no two pork butts are the same. So double wrap back in the uh, smoker until it's done. And then we're gonna start working on this corn salad. So this corn's been in there maybe 45 minutes. We're gonna pop it out of here. We're gonna peel back the husk. It should come off real easy. Especially the silk. So this corn is ready to eat right now if you wanted. But we're gonna get a little bit of char on there for some extra flavor. So just get these out. And then I'm gonna put it right over my coal bed. You can leave those husks on, no big deal. Cut them off later. And I'll do a couple minutes per side to get some char marks. And then we're gonna cut it up and make that salad. 
and the corn is done. We'll get to that in one second. I just did about a minute per side. So this is a Kenji Lopez Alt salad recipe. I love his videos. I will put a link in the description if you want to see the whole thing. And one of the great things about watching Kenji is all the different little techniques. So what he shows you is uh, to rinse your onions. This takes away that pungent flavor, the same stuff that makes your eyes water. And I don't know about you, but I hate going to a uh, summer picnic or something and you bite into a salad, now you've got onion breath all day. So we're gonna take the edge off of those onions by rinsing them. And depending on how many people you feed, you might need to do more or less. I'm just doing about half of a medium red onion. Okay, now for the corn. Just gonna take it right into the bowl, run my knife down the edge. So just cut the corn off the cob into the bowl. And then next up I've got a bunch of little cherry tomatoes. You could use your favorite. I like to cut them in half. So go through, cut all these in half. All right, now I'm gonna rough chop some cilantro. He used basil. You could also use parsley. Uh, just whatever you like. Go ahead and do that. Okay. Now we'll add the onions. Salt to taste. Tiny bit of coarsely ground black pepper. And then some fresh lime juice. Freshly squeezed. I'm gonna start with one, I'll taste it. If I feel like I need more, I'll add more. Just kinda how I roll. And then I have some extra virgin olive oil, just enough to coat. And I'll grab my tongs and give this a good mix, get everything incorporated. And let me just get a quick taste test here, see if it needs anything. I want a little bit more lime on that, but other than that, it's beautiful. And now that I know that tastes good, in goes the feta cheese. It's always better to have uh, the whole block of feta and break it up. But uh, when I went to the grocery store, they didn't have it. So just gotta make do. There we go. So now this will be ready for later tonight. And finally, our pork butt is done. So it was about a four pound butt. With resting period, it took roughly six hours. I let it rest for an hour. Probably should let it rest for another hour, but check this out. It really darkened up nice, and that is an awesome bark as far as I'm concerned. And so I got two layers of gloves on. I know this is still gonna hurt, so I'll do it quick. You could slice this, you could shred it, you could pull it. I'm just gonna pick it up with my hands and take the heat like a man for a second, just so I can show you this. And it shreds beautifully. I'd say another half hour rest uh, would have been perfect, just to let it cool a little bit more. So just a closer look, that's the smoke ring, that red. Beautiful bark, I mean, it just smells amazing. The texture is so soft. Let me find a bite I want to try. I'm going to go with this piece here with the bark. Here we go. Wow. Very, very savory. A little bit of spice. A lot of pepper. I'll definitely be trying this one again. And then, I've got the salad. So we're going to be eating good tonight. Let's try that. Mm. 
That salad is so light and fresh, and it's had a couple hours to let all those flavors kind of marry together. I absolutely love it. And you know what you're going to love? One of those two videos right there, and I'll see you over there.